he asked me a question that I don't think anyone ever asked me. I had to like stop and think, hey, this isn't gonna last forever. There's there's better on the way, the best is yet to come. That's none of that is from God, but he allows it because he knows that it's gonna benefit you and he's gonna take that and he's gonna turn it and he's gonna use it for your good. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back to the Walk Podcast. If you're new here, my name is Sam. I post all things faith, lifestyle, travel vlogs. This channel is essentially a video diary of my life. Um, and I'm really happy that you're here. If you like this podcast and topics like this, I would love for you to subscribe and join the family. Um, and like I said, I'm really glad you're here and I will get into what we're going to talk about in a second. But if you are watching here on YouTube, you see, I have a little friend <laughs> on my lap. If you do not follow my main channel, or if you didn't see the vlogs on this current channel that went up within the last week or so, this is the new addition to the family. This is Luna girl. She is a Siberian kitten. She's been with me for a week now and it's crazy. I've only had her for a week and I swear she's already bigger. And so she just woke up from a nap. So she is ready to go. She is ready to play. She has all the energy in the world and we're going to see how this goes. This is the first podcast episode that I am recording since having her home. Um, she's probably going to jump around and leave us, which is fine. She has toys everywhere and this, this is no longer my apartment. This is, this is her apartment, but I wanted her to say hi to you guys. So if you hear rumbling of toys in the background, if you hear her little squeak, she does meow, but it sounds like a squeak. That's what that is. Oh, she's laying down right now. Maybe she's going to be, um, nope, she's chewing on a remote. Okay, we're just going to let her, we're just going to let her do her thing. But I, guys, she has been the biggest blessing, the, the happiest addition to my life. She's a pain in the butt sometimes, don't get me wrong. She is... She's a newborn, essentially. She's nine weeks old, two months. Um, and she doesn't let me sleep at night, but I love her so much. I can't even be mad at her. She is just so cute. She brings me so much joy. She gives me all the cuddles. She runs to me when I get home. It's just, it's been, it's been really, really nice. So like I said, she's been with me for a week and I am so excited to watch her grow. Siberians do get pretty big she's gonna be anywhere from like 12 to 14 12 to 15 pounds um so she's gonna be a big girl um but i'm so excited to to watch her grow so you're gonna see her grow she's gonna be in the background of my videos um go ahead and follow me on instagram if you want to keep up with her there i also have two tiktok accounts i have one for the podcast it's called the walk podcast with two t's I also have my personal TikTok, which is Sam with two M's, D as in David, 16. So Sam D 16. Um, and my Instagram is Sam underscore on <laughs> underscore YT, Sam on YouTube. So I will have all that down below should you want to check all that out. But without further ado, let's jump into what I actually want to talk about today. And I want to get, I'm going to grab a pillow. I want to get, I want to get comfy. I'm always comfy when I film these, but I want to get extra comfy. That's nice. Okay. So I will be honest. I didn't know what I wanted to film this week. I try to film lately. I've been filming podcast episodes every two weeks and I have a list on in my phone of podcast topic ideas and I'm going to talk about all of them. I want to, um, but for some reason this week, when I really sat down to think and I was like, okay, I need to, I need to start planning. I need to, you know, write up my notes. Cause you guys know, I always have notes or else I won't stay on track. Um, I was looking at my list and none of them were speaking to me. Like I didn't feel passionate about any of them, not to say that they're bad topics, but just maybe, I don't know, maybe I wasn't in the right headspace. Maybe I wasn't ready. Maybe just wasn't the right timing. I don't know. Um, and I was like, oh boy, like, what, what am I going to do then? And so while I was having my quiet time that morning, I think this was, this was actually last week. I think this was last Friday. 
um, I was in my quiet time and I was praying and I was, I was asking, I was like, Lord, I need some guidance. I need you to just talk to me about what I need to talk about. Maybe it'll help me. Maybe, I mean, he knows what the other people on the other side of the screen need to hear. So I was really just asking for some direction because I I didn't know. And I don't ever want to just come on here and spit out the first thing that comes to mind. You know, I want it to be something that's, that's meaningful and that's going to be helpful to both me and you guys. So I prayed that prayer, you know, went about my day, went to work. As I'm going to work, I was talking to somebody who's, he's a a new friend of mine and we just got to talking and he was asking, um, you know, how I, like what changed in my life that made me want to really pursue God the right way, you know, and, and wholeheartedly and, and, he was asking, like, what would change in your life that, that made you make that pivotal decision? And I said, oh, well, you know, it's a couple of things. I said, you know, I've said this to you guys. You guys know this. You know, the main thing that really initiated the change was I went through a bad breakup. Um, but then, you know, I said that other things as well. And we were just talking about how beautiful it is. And this is something I've talked to you guys about, too. How beautiful it is when you start really pursuing God because you want to, not because you feel like you have to. And he totally, you know, he agreed. He said he's, he's experienced that as well. He said he's experienced, you know, a bad breakup as well. And so we were just having a really nice discussion. And, um, I forget what he said, something like, you know, I'm sorry you had to go through that, but like, I don't know. We were just talking about how like God can use that stuff for, for good. And he asked me a question that I don't think anyone ever asked me. And it really was a question that made me, I had to like stop and think. And I was at work too. And I had to like find a second where I had the time to really sit and think about an answer. And, you know, I I had said, you know, but I I went through the breakup and I wouldn't change it for the world and I've healed and this and that and whatever. And he said, what, what showed you, what indicates that you've really healed? And I was like, huh, I've never really thought about it. I mean, I do know the answer to that. And I feel like unintentionally, I have answered that question and maybe in other podcast episodes or, or, or on other platforms. Um, or maybe I haven't, I don't even know. But as I got that question and I was thinking about it, I was like, I think I just got my next podcast episode. How do you know that you've healed? And I actually have to tell him, I I haven't spoken to him since, I have to tell him that he inspired a podcast episode. And I truly believe that God had me have that conversation for a reason. And it's just, it's funny. Like some of you will just say like, oh, it's a coincidence. I just, I truly believe that, you know, I prayed that morning. I asked for direction. I said, Lord, I really need to to start planning a podcast episode today if I'm going to film it on Monday. Because I was so busy this weekend that Friday was my day to plan. And, um, the same day, the same day God answered my prayer. And that's just, it, it, to me, it just shows that God will always provide for what you need. If you, if you really ask him, he will provide and he did. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and this can talk, this is healing about any kind of relationship. It could be a friendship that went wrong. It could be, um, a family relationship, you know, you had a falling out with a family member. It can be a romantic relationship, a breakup that didn't end properly. Um, or it just really any situation that hurt you, anything that left you disappointed, anything that left you sad, that felt like it robbed your joy. Um, and I truly believe that, you know, we're all adults at this point, right? We've all been through things. We've all been hurt. We've all been sad. We've all been, you know, we've all gone through things that really kind of shake you a little bit. So I feel like we can all relate to this in some way or another. So I'm going to start looking at my, at my phone here, at my notes, and, um, let's just get into it. So I wanted to, I know the last episode, maybe the last two episodes. I don't even remember guys. I'm so tired. My between the cat and, and YouTube and, and friends and family and work and all the things I'm tired, but it's okay. Today's Monday. I'm off from work today. It's good. I'm happy to be here. But anyway, um, the last episode, I didn't really share scripture like at all. I don't think, 
Um, so I have a few scriptures that I want to share with you. And it's basically just to give you some encouragement. Um, whether you are a Christian or not, I mean, me as a Christian, as a believer, I believe that every word in the Bible is true. Um, but if you are not a believer, that's okay. You're still more than welcome here. And I hope that these, these words will uplift you a little bit and maybe give you a little bit of hope and a little bit of encouragement, however you want to take it. Um, but I wanted to put encouragement before we actually get into it, just to, to show you that if any of you are really going through hurt right now, you, you may very well be, there are a decent amount of people that, that stop by this channel and watch these episodes and on Spotify too which I forgot to mention, I would love for you guys to support the podcast on Spotify. All of that will be linked down below. Um, but I wanted to encourage you that if you're going through it right now, if you're going through a season of hurt, a season of loneliness, a, seri a season of isolation, or just change, you know, after a heartbreak, after a disappointment, after something fell through, I want you to know I am living proof that it doesn't last forever and it gets better. The healing, it may be different length of, lengths of time for everybody. It's not going to look the same. Healing is not linear, and he, your healing journey is not going to be identical to mine or your friends or your neighbors. Um, but I can promise you that it does get better eventually, and this isn't going to last forever. So I want to just share some scriptures of encouragement for you before we get started. Um, and I hope that they speak to you. So the first one is 1 Peter 5.10. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Romans chapter 5 verses 3 and 4 is the next one. And it says, more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. So that basically, in other words, is saying that this suffering, this pain that you're feeling is for a reason. And it's so hard when you're in it. I know from experience when you're in it, it's so hard to understand why am I going through this? I have a friend that's going through health issues right now, um, pretty severe ones, and she can't understand right now why God is putting her through it. And she's she believes in God. She's a believer, and she says she knows that it's not coming from God. She knows that it's not punishment, but she can't understand why it's happening to her. And I can't. I don't have the answers either, unfortunately. But I can speak from my my past hurt and my experience in hurt that. It's for a reason, like it says, the suffering produces endurance. It makes you stronger. And then when you become stronger, your character then develops and you become more of who you're actually supposed to be and you become a person of strength and you become a person of perseverance. And then that character that, that, um, that develops in you then produces hope. And that shows you and that tells you and that strengthens your faith that, okay, this isn't gonna last forever. There is there's better on the way. The best is yet to come. This is not forever. This is a, the temporary, a temporary pain. So I really, really, I just love the whole book of Romans. I really do. It's one of the first books that I read all the way through when I really started reading the Bible, um, like diligently every day. Um, I really recommend Romans. If you've never read it, it's fantastic. I actually want to read it again soon because it's really good. So, um, I think that's my probably my favorite verse I wrote here for encouragement and you know the the last couple months and even just over the last year but definitely within the last couple months I see I see your your such such sweet comments from you guys you know on my podcast episodes on my on my main channel on Instagram on TikTok on all the, all the platforms that I'm on and you know I I just appreciate it so much people are like Sam whatever you're doing like you look so much happier you know, you're glowing, you're this and that, you know, you look so much better, not that you look so much better, but that just people see a difference in me. And I just want that to be proof that if you go to my main channel, Soft ASMR, uh, many of you know me from there. If you go back a year, I looked really sad. I looked really like a sh like a shell. And my, one of my best friends always says like a shell of a woman. Like that's what I looked like and that's what I felt like. So just 
by just watching my videos alone, it's just proof that it doesn't, it doesn't last forever. You just, you can't sit in it. That's a whole other topic that I feel like I've talked about before. So I feel like I won't talk about that too much. Um, you can't sit in it. You can't stay there. You do have to take the steps to, to heal. And I, yeah, we won't go into that. That's a whole other conversation, but, um, just take it from me. Okay. I want, I want you guys to feel encouraged that you're going to be okay. I promise you. Um, and one of my favorite verses of all time before we actually get into the, how do you know you've been healed? Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those who love him. That's one of, that's a very famous verse. A lot of people know it. Um, and it's basically just saying that all things work together for your good. Even the bad things, even the painful things, everything is for a reason. Maybe you're going through this pain because it's teaching you compassion so that when the next person you know goes through something similar that you did, you can help them through it. Or you're going through health issues and you can't see, you don't understand why you're going through it. But then when you come out of it, it built endurance, it built compassion, it built experience for you to then encourage the next person that goes through it. Everything is for a reason and it's all for your good. And that's why if you've, if you've ever heard, and there's a song about this too, but if you've ever heard somebody say, if it's not good, then he's not done yet. If it's not good right now, if your situation's not good right now, God's just not done. He's not done. It's a work in progress. So I really want you to take that to heart because it's, it's so true. Even if you don't know it, even if you don't feel it, even if you don't talk to God, if you don't talk to Jesus regularly, that's, that's fine. I can, well, I encourage you to, because it's going to change your life for the better. I promise you. But even if you don't feel it, he's working. He's like, this is your life, right? This is a bowl of your life. And God's just like, He's moving all the things together for your good, for everything to fit right into the place where it's supposed to. Okay, so let me um, let me carry on. So I have four things, and this is straight from the message that I sent this friend back. I look, I, I answered him, and then like it, it took me like an hour to to kind of think like this is my next podcast episode. This is what this is what we're gonna talk about. So I then went back to my DM that I responded to him and I broke it down into points and this is how I got my notes. So so I feel like a lot can go into this answer, but there are four main points that I wrote down that really tell me that I have healed. And I want this to be an open conversation. So I want you guys to tell me whether you agree, whether you disagree, whether you have other points, what showed you that you have healed, what what you have healed and, and, and how you have moved on from the situation or the person that caused you hurt. So the first thing I have is that you can look back on that specific situation without feeling pain. If you've ever been hurt by someone, whether it's a friend, an ex, whatever, I have experienced this many times, and tell me if you have too, where you don't talk to them anymore, they're not in your life anymore, but you see a picture of them, or somebody mentions them, says their name, and you get like the sharpest pang in your chest where it like shocks you almost. That's, That's pain that you're feeling. So, I know now that I can look back on that situation. I can think about that person. I can even see a random picture of them on like Facebook, you know, if we have few mutual friends or whatever. I can I can see or I can think back to it and I don't get that pang in my chest. I don't feel I don't feel pain. Um and that's that's a big one. And I, in, in my experience that lasted a long uh, not that long a time. It lasted a good couple months where, you know, I would hear a mention of them or see something somewhere or even something that just like was a memory. And I I would be like, oh, like that hurts. And then you sit and you think about it and you start going through your memories and you start, you know, you just, you just sit in it. You sit in it. You sit in that pain and it makes you anxious and it makes you sad. And it's really hard to break out of that. At least it was in my experience. Luna's back. She's back. Hi, mommy. Come here. She's meowing at me from the floor. Hold on. Okay, she's purring now, but she's calm. So if you hear purring, <laughs> I am sorry. Um, I feel like the the godfather is sitting here petting my cat. Okay, anyway. Um, what was I saying? 
that that pain is gone that sting is gone and what helped me when I got into those situations where I would really sit in it and just keep thinking about it I would ask God and I learned this from who did I learn this from uh, was it Janine Amapola I don't remember one uh, uh, there it's one Christian TikToker that I follow um or influencer or whatever you want to call them content creator um I heard this and I tried it for myself they said ask God to replace your memories ask God to take your memories away and it sounds weird and you're probably like what are you talking about it works I'm not gonna say that they go away completely like it's not like you're asking God to give you amnesia but it just makes you think of those memories less and I asked God to like just fill my head with more things you know different different things happier things new things new friends new people new experiences um it's something I learned many many years ago too is if you are like in a situation where say for example you are out at a place where you and your ex used to go all the time and you're like you just you're just consumed with memories that you don't want it's actually good to put yourself in those places again because you're making new memories there to replace the old ones so the next time you go to that restaurant or that park i'm just pulling out random things but next time you go there you're gonna think of this new time that you were there rather than the time you were there with your ex or your friend ex best friend whatever um stop screaming at me she's like pay attention to me love me play with me luna how do you get over hurt tell the people she's like i've been alive for nine weeks i don't have the experience sorry for that brief interruption thank goodness for the power of editing i think she's okay now okay moving on we're just gonna move on to point two because i feel like i talked about point one enough the next way that i know that I have healed is I can think back to the thing that hurt me or the person that hurt me and I can wish them well. I feel like the first instinct when things happen is, you know, I, I, I will say I never really experienced this too, too much, but they're definitely not going to be your favorite person, right? You're not going to want to, you know, depending on the level of hurt, you're not going to want to be friends. You're not going to want you know, you're just not going to think about wishing them well. Okay, let's let's be real. We're all human. We're all, we all have those feelings that arise, you know. And so you, you feel this hurt and instantly you're just like, <clears throat> you know. And if you have <laughs> loyal friends like me, you know, they're going to want to back you up and they're going to be like, like I have a friend that whenever somebody's going through something bad with a guy or whatever, she's always like, we ride at dawn. Like, let's go. We get, we grab, we gather the troops and we ride at dawn. Obviously we don't actually do that, but you know, people get riled up to like defend you. As time goes on though, and as you heal, you can think of that person and you can wish them well. For me, you know, we know we're, I'm talking about a romantic relationship. I can think about that person now and not get mad, not feel hurt. I can say, I really truly wish them well. I wish them a happy marriage one day. I wish them happy, you know, and healthy children and all the good things that they want in life. Doesn't mean I want to see it or be a part of it in any way, shape or form, but I can think about it and I can wish them well and I can um wish the best for them you're gonna she's gonna she's trying to pounce over here i'm sorry guys as she grows older this won't be as much of an of an issue but as long as she's being quiet it's okay um i think this also comes this point also comes with getting older the older you get it just becomes it becomes a maturity thing you know like you don't want to gossip about them you don't it's not your priority or a desire for you to talk about them with people and get people to turn on them or to think badly about them or, you know, to get people on your side because it feels like that in the beginning. Like I, I've said before, there are three sides to every story. There's your side, their side, and the unbiased truth that like only God knows, literally. 
please don't step on my computer. Um, all I need is for her to stop this recording and I'm going to be very upset. Okay. Um, but there's three sides to every story. So in the beginning, you're going to want to tell your side and you're going to want to defend yourself and you're going to want, you're going to want people to kind of be on your side. It's just natural. It's normal. It's, it just, it's what happens as the healing happens though. You know, I make sure that whenever, I mean, it's very rare, but if the person that caused me hurt ever comes up in conversation with mutual people, I either keep my mouth shut and I don't say anything, or I always make sure to say, you know, we'll never be friends again. You know, we're never going to like talk again, but you know, I don't wish him any harm. I want people to know that I don't wish him any harm. You know what I mean? So that's a really big thing. When you can look back on that friend, that family member, that ex, that whatever, and you're like... I really hope that they're that they're okay and they get everything they want in life. Then that's that's a really really good indication that you you're good that you have moved on. Um, easier said than done sometimes, especially in the beginning. But taking the high road is always a is always a good way to go. The next thing is a big one, and this this came pretty quickly to me. I will say, you're thankful for it. You're thankful for whatever situation that happened that caused you hurt. You're like, wow, I'm so glad that happened. I wouldn't take it back. I wouldn't change it for the world because it made me stronger. It made me bolder. It made me smarter. It, you know, made me into the person that I'm supposed to be. It helped me develop my character. Um, and so for me, like I can see that the last year or so how much I've grown and I I learned what I would have what I could have done differently that now when the next relationship comes I will do differently um there's just and that it just goes back to everything works together for your good everything plays a role and nothing is by accident nothing is coincidence nothing is just chance it all everything that you go through in life the good the bad the ugly it makes you into the person that you're supposed to be, the person that you were meant to be all along. So I always say that whether something doesn't work out, a job, a relationship, a friendship, uh, whatever, something that disappoints you, it's okay because that's just your story unfolding the way that it's supposed to. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about, but I'm just putting that out there. Um, and so, like I said, you would you see what you would change going forward in, in other situations. And I think what comes with this too is like, you know, accepting it and being thankful for it. Forgiveness, I feel like ties into this point. And I want to really emphasize that forgiving and forgetting are two very different things. Um, What makes it really hard to forgive somebody a lot of times is pride. Now, I will say that they, I'm just talking about, in my case, it's a breakup or for you, it might be just like a, an ex best friend or, or whatever. Um, but there are some people out there that are really severely, severely, severely hurt. So I don't want to sound ignorant. Um, there are a lot of other situations where forgiveness can be a lot harder. Um, but I think it's possible for everyone. Um, but I want to say that forgiving is not forgetting. So I have forgiven, I have moved on, right? But I'll never forget. And by that meaning, if if this will never happen, but let's just say if this person, you know, called me one day and was like, hey, what's going on? Like, how's life? I'd be like, no, 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 no. I don't wish you harm. But I also, I'm not going to forget like what happened. You know what I mean? Um, So there's a big difference between that. So, you know, take that how you will. But I will say, and I think I've said this before, that, you know, forgiveness is more for you than it is for them. You don't even ever have to tell them that you forgave them. I never did. I had to be okay with not really getting a lot of closure, the closure that I needed. Um, And that's just something you have to come to terms with on your own. Um, but you, I I never like, (laughs) I don't think I've ever in my life with anyone that's ever wronged me that I don't talk to anymore. I don't think I've ever called anybody up and been like, Hey, I just want you to know I forgive you. Not that there would be anything wrong with that, but I have never done that. So that just goes to show you that forgiveness is more for you 
than it is for them. So um, that's point number three. And now the fourth one, I want to talk to... My, well, I'm talking to everybody, okay? I don't want to make this seem like it's exclusive, but I will say this one is definitely like Christian based. Um, so maybe not all of you will agree, but I'm just going to go through it anyway. Um, you can look back on the whole situation and you can see how God's hand was over every single thing that happened. Even before the instance of hurt, you can look back even before that and you can see how God was just moving everything together exactly the way it was supposed to he was planting seeds for that hurt and it sounds bad it's like he was planting seeds for the hurt the hurt doesn't come from god but he allows it because he knows that it's going to benefit you that's again a whole other topic but you'll see how god's hand is over you and over that situation like you and it kind of goes hand in hand where like you look back and you're like you're thankful for it because i if there's one thing i have learned in the last year or so it's that if God wants your attention, he is going to get your attention. He is going to ruffle some feathers. He is going to take things out of your life. He is going to knock you down to build you back up. And again, when I say that, it's I, I don't believe it's God knocking you down because only the good and perfect things come from the Lord, right? So nothing bad, sickness, pain, whatever that's none of that is from God, but he allows it because he knows that it's going to benefit you and he's going to take that and he's going to turn it and he's going to use it for your good, right? So when God needs your attention, he will break you down to build you back up. And not only will he build you back up to like where you were, but he will build you up even better. And um, for me, in my case, he took things away for me, things I idolized, things I wanted, he took those things away to show me that the only thing that I needed was him first. And he will get your attention because he knows what's holding you back from reaching your full potential. There are so many things that I do in my life now that I never would have done had he not brought me out of those situations. Had he not made those all those circumstances work together for me to close that chapter of my life. So many things now that I love, so many things that fill my life with joy, new experiences, new people. I would have never unlocked any of that had I stayed where I was. And I know that for a fact. So that just goes back to to being, you can look back and you can see how he was working the whole time. And you're just so thankful for what you went through. I feel like I kind of went on a tangent. Did I miss anything? Because I feel like I wrote some pretty good things down. Um... I I wrote like kind of going hand in hand with like you see his hand over everything you also feel his love and I know that every single day that I sat in my bedroom or I sat on this couch literally right here crying asking God for community asking God to take my pain away asking he was there he's there with you holding your hand through the good the bad and the ugly through the tears through the sorrow through the joy through the pain He's there. He sees everything. He sees everything that's in your heart. He sees everything that's going on in your life. He sees what's in the heart of the people that you interact with and he protects you. He will protect you, especially if you ask him to. So I just, you just, that's another way that I I know that I have healed is that I can look back and I can see all that and I can just be so grateful for it. And I, I genuinely, I thank him for it. All the pain that I went through last year, I'm not kidding. Every day when I pray, one of the stages of prayer that I go through, because I've said this before, it's like five layers of prayer. The first one is uh, reverence. The second one is reflection, thanking him for everything he's done in your life. And I thank him every day, every day. Thank you for every closed door. Thank you for every closed chapter. Thank you for pulling me out of relationships that I should not have been in. Thank you for every failed talking stage. Thank you for every failed relationship because I know that that was all redirection. I thank him every day. Every day for something that caused me pain, something that caused panic attacks, something that caused me crying until I couldn't breathe. I sit here and I thank him for it. Every day. If that's not growth... If that's not healing, <laughs> I don't know what is. Okay. Um, oh, that's literally what I, yeah, I didn't even realize I wrote that, but I wrote that, that every day I thank him for that. And I know like talking about unlocking new things, you want to know something, I would not have this podcast 
had I not gone through all the pain I went last year. I would not have this podcast. I would not be talking to you guys about these topics because I wouldn't have had the experience to talk about them. I get messages from people from listening to this podcast that they're like, you know, I'm not a Christian. I've never really been to church, but you inspired me to go check out my local church or, you know, this podcast episode inspired me to purchase my first Bible. None of that, (laughs) none of that would have been possible, truly, had I not gone through that pain. So you want to talk about everything working together for good? That's a perfect example right there. And I don't know even what else I, I, I could say. I, you know, had I not gone through the pain, had I not turned back to Jesus and to church and to my faith, I wouldn't have had the passion to share it with others. My best friend now goes to church. She'd never been to church before I brought her, not really. Definitely not to a Christian church. She goes to a Christian church in her area. She reads the Bible. She's watching The Chosen, you know, and this is not because of me. I'm just, I'm just a, a vessel. I am a vessel of a woman for God to speak through me, okay? So I don't want you to think like, oh, I'm doing all this and I, I should get all the glory. It's not, that's not what it is. I'm just, I am the mouth speaking, <laughs> speaking the words and saying the things. Um, and so I just feel, I just feel so grateful. And the other day, somebody asked me not that long ago, one of my, my best friend's husband asked me, so what do you want to do with this podcast? What do you want to do? And I said, honestly, I don't need the podcast to have a million followers, subscribers, whatever. That'd be cool. I'm not going to say no to it, but I don't need that. I have, right. I have a full-time job. I have my other YouTube channel. I have, I don't make a lot of money from this podcast. I'll be, I'll be real honest with you. I don't, I don't need that. But if I can lead even three people to Jesus, I'm cool. I'm cool. Because I'm being used exactly the way that God wanted to use me. I truly believe that. So, anyway. I hope that you guys enjoyed this message. It was a little all over the place. Just because of the cat and stuff. But honestly, she did better than I thought that she was going to. And there's a nice little funny blooper that I obviously cut it out here. But I'm going to post it on my Instagram. um, Because I think it's really funny. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, thank you for just coming back for all of your encouraging comments. And I see even the messages I get on, on Instagram about the podcast. I see them all and I, I really appreciate them all. And I'm really glad you guys are here. I hope you're getting something out of these episodes. I know a good amount of you are, and that makes me really, really happy because I get so much out of them too. Like I said, I never want you to think that I'm preaching to you. I am preaching with you. I'm preaching to myself just as much as I am to you. So anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. What, what showed you that you have healed, you know? Um, and I can't wait to read your comments. So thank you for being here and I will see you guys for the next episode. Bye guys.